In the world of literature, there is no other book like the Bible. Welcome to the wonder of His Word. Good to have you join us again for this presentation. We're looking at the book of Genesis, aren't we? And in our previous talk, we looked at typology, of how typology fits in absolutely perfect in order for us to understand more clearly what the Bible has to say. We're dealing with Genesis chapter 25 today, and we're looking at verse 27 uh, onward to verse 34. So I'm just going to read excerpts there. And this is the narrative dealing with two sons that were born to Isaac. Remember, Isaac was the son of Abraham, and uh, Isaac marries Rebekah, and they have two sons. They're actually twin boys. The one is Esau, and the other one is Jacob. And even before these boys were born, um, Rebecca experienced a bit of conflict within her womb between these two. And we pick up the story now with these two boys that are growing up into men. Verse 27, so the boys grew and Esau was a skillful hunter and he was a man of the field. But Jacob was a very mild man, a very soft-natured man. He dwelt in tents. He did not like the wilds out there. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game or venison. But Rebekah, she loved Jacob, her son. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and the Bible says he was weary, he was tired, he was exhausted after a day of hunting. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with the same red stew that you have, some of the uh, interpretations or translations of the Bible, is uh, a pottage as such. It was a very thick soup that uh, they would make in those days with special lintels in it. And he said, I'm weary, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Edom, which is uh, a word that originates from the fact that uh, Esau was a man that was very much interested in his own personal appetites, and therefore he was more conscious of his needs than what God wanted him to do. And the Edomites were a nation that stemmed from uh, Esau. However, it goes on, but Jacob said, sell me your birthright this day. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die in any case. I'm absolutely exhausted. So uh, what is my birthright really worth to me? Give me of the stew. And then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day that you will give me your birthright. So he swore to him, and he sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and the stew of lentils, and then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He despised his birthright. Now that's going to become the basis upon this presentation we're going to build our thoughts on this particular conflict between uh, two brothers, Esau and Jacob. As we would notice, it was Esau that was the older twin of the two. Jacob was one who really valued what the inheritance from his father meant. It was not only an inheritance from a material assets point of view, but the blessing that God had given to his grandfather, Abraham, had given to his father Isaac, Jacob wanted to carry on that dynasty. He wanted to carry on that blessing. And therefore, the blessing that was given by God to Abram and to his father Isaac, he wanted that. He really looked forward to having that blessing upon his life because he valued that more than any physical uh, prosperity or essentially any human ambition. Where Esau, in contrast, was one who was just interested in his own appetites, interested in his own personal survival, his own personal self-preservation. Therefore, it shows the conflict between these two boys, two very contrasting personalities. Now, the Bible actually tells us of the conflict that continued. Uh, Jacob has to flee from the home because he's, his father um, has given to him a blessing that he did not deserve. What had actually transpired, and that is over a period of time, the time came when Isaac was, who was very uh, going blind, he was possibly 
almost senile. He was very, very old. He was about to die. And he realized the time had come that he needed to give the blessing. And he had intended to give the blessing to his oldest son, Esau. But as you know, Esau sold that blessing. He sold that birthright. And when Rebekah hears what is going to happen, she tells Jacob that whilst your brother is out hunting, he's going to come back and your father's going to bless him. I want you to go in and I want you to pretend that you Esau. And that's exactly what happened. Many people say, well, Jacob lied and he deceived his brother. Well, there appears to be a deception there from a human point of view. But really, if Esau had sold his birthright to Jacob, Jacob was in actual fact Esau. Jacob had taken on the full identity of Esau. And therefore, his mother had actually made him from the animal skin a very hairy chest, which was uh, Esau's uh, uh, characteristics and, and, and features. Um, and therefore, when he comes into the presence of his father, who is now semi-blind, uh, he reaches out and he touches his boy. He feels the hair on the boy's chest, which is an actual fact. He thinks it's Esau. And Jacob says, I am Esau. And he says, have you brought the venison for me? Yes, because what had actually happened, Rebecca, that is Jacob's mother, had prepared a special venison pie. And they present this to the old man. And the old man actually places the blessing, his hands on, on Jacob, and he imparts the blessing to Jacob. Now, the problem is Jacob goes out. Esau then comes back after hunting, and he brings the menace, and he says, no, Dad, I've come now for the special blessing. And his dad says, but hang on, didn't you come earlier? He says, no, I didn't. And then they realize that Jacob has deceived Esau. Now, there's some very, very interesting thoughts there. Let us have a look at that. Remember that you and I have inheritance with God through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Christ is the heir. He is the one who is going to inherit what God has promised him. And that is, he is going to be the prince and eventually the king of kings and the lord of lords. When we come before God to receive a blessing from God, we do not come in our own name. We come in the name of the one through whom that blessing can come. Just like Jacob came through using his brother Esau because he had taken on that birthright, so you and I have been given a birthright in Christ, that when we come before God, we can come before God on the merits of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see again what is concealed in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. In the book of Romans chapter 8, um, the, the Bible actually tells us, actually chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, it emphasizes the following fact, that Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. God hated Esau? What that really means is a preference. The word hate is a very strong English word. But in the, in the Greek here, it is basically speaking about preference. I have loved Jacob, and I have resisted or despised Esau. Why? Because the spirit of Esau was one that only valued material, physical things. Jacob valued the spiritual blessing that God would impart. In exactly the same way, you and I should know that God loves those who love him. And he despises those who reject his way. There we find again typology playing out absolutely beautifully. So here we find in this particular narrative and in, and in the story, the conflict between these two boys. Was Jacob wrong in saying, I am Esau? Technically speaking, he wasn't wrong. Why? Because Esau had sold his identity to Jacob. He ceased to be Esau when he said, I'm not interested in my birthright. I'm only interested in actually surviving today. You can have my birthright. He sold it. He had no right to it. And selling his birthright meant that he sold his full identity. And it is when you and I are prepared to sell our personal ambitions and goals and aspirations and our own identity. It is then that we can say, I live in Christ because I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I that liveth, but Christ who lives within me. The wonderful Christian message is actually an exchange life. That's what it is. We exchange our life, our own worldly ambitions, we exchange it for what God wants of us. Because your, our natural pursuit 
is for happiness. Not so. Everybody's trying to be happy. If I have more, I'm going to be happier. And God is actually saying, your happiness does not depend upon what you accumulate. Your happiness is dependent upon if you are prepared to honor and glorify me. If you live your life to bring honor and glory to God, happiness will follow. Happiness is the result of bringing honor and glory to God. Because how on earth can you be happy if you're not fulfilling your purpose? And your purpose is to honor and glorify God. And that was the distinction between these two boys, Esau and Jacob. The wonderful story is that Jacob's name is changed. God changes him from Jacob, because the word Jacob means a crooked person, a supplanter, and he gives him a name Israel, which means being a prince with God and with man. God changes Jacob's nature. Jacob's nature was changed from that of his old identity to a new identity, a beautiful identity, and he gives him the name Israel. Now, from Israel, from Jacob's lineage, came 12 sons, and they made up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And we will learn a little bit more about that in our future talks. But great to have you join us, and remember that do it God's way. Don't be willing to actually sell your identity to the world, because it will just mess your identity up. Sell your identity to God. Take on His identity, His characteristics, and you will find the happiness that you so richly deserve by bringing honor and glory to Almighty God. I hope that makes a bit of sense, and I hope you found that quite intriguing. <music>